something gone wrong you understand horribly between um charlie Kirk as he was debating um this college um student and then he said something at the end that makes me speechless so i decide to share this with you but the truth about it is i don't know how he must be feeling now that president donald j trump has been declared the winner so let's get on to this video and then check out this debate i think that's a bad faith question all right, all right. We're, we're, bad we're, faith actor man right. what, what's your name miles give it up for miles he's hey, disagreeing miles, with us i you? imagine today hey miles hey rob how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. And nice seeing you again. Good seeing you again. Yeah, yes, perfect. Okay. I don't know. But my question is, when you go to these, like, events, like, ma major Republican, conservative, is it, like, now, do you face some bias when you're speaking, or do you believe some of the stuff that you're actually saying? Because I know you have, like, good quotes and stuff, but I just feel like, when, you, when you're like in a sea full of like MAGA hats and stuff, is it not like hard to like speak against that? Or do you like actually believe everything that you're saying in a way? Yes, I do believe everything I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a bad faith question. Hmm. I do, because your, your, your assumption is that we are insincere in our beliefs, but we're here, the, the only benefit that we have here to come here today is to talk to people like yourself because we love our country and we really, really want to make sure that there are things that are happening now that we feel are potentially fundamentally um, disrupting what has been so great about this greatest experiment in human history, which is uh, this unfettered free speech that you, the, the, one, the woman that you're supporting, Kamala Harris and her, um, her running mate Walls paper. <laughs> they said that the, that the free speech, they des describe it as a privilege. Now this is either um, they're constitutionally ignorant or they're uh, knowingly false because it is a guaranteed First Amendment right for all Americans. It is not a privilege like a driver's license. When you are born in America, you have the right to speak your mind. And it isn't the nice stuff that needs protecting. It's the stuff that everybody disagrees with. It's the stuff that maybe is not nice. But that needs to be protecting too, because if someone's going to decide what free speech that you say and what I say, if it's going to be the government, they're always going to do what's best for the government. So we need to protect all speech. And I'm going to protect your right to free speech. I'm going to protect your right to to vote any way that you want from the highest mountain. Always, I will do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in the spirit of hearing ideas that we might always hear, tell us why you're supporting Kamala Harris. I just like her character more than I like Trump. I don't like it. No, 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 no. Guys, no. guys okay, give, give, give Miles an opportunity quiet, yeah. to, to uninterrupted to tell me, because it's fascinating. I didn't, I didn't know her character was something worth. <laughs> I like that she's trying to like work for the middle class. That's what I see a lot, and I think that's what she is. So, so yeah, Miles, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. What has she or Joe Biden done for the middle class in the last four years? Mm. No. Not too sure about that. That's okay. So yeah. um, but I'm like slowly getting there. No, that's like okay. Election day. I, I feel like that's okay if we can like work our way up. And for sure. No, no, no. And, and it takes a lot of courage to come up to an event like this. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you where we're coming from. And then maybe I can convince you to trade out that hat for a MAGA hat. Just maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a bit. That's a long shot. We'll see. So. Kamala Harris is part of a tradition of career politicians that run very persuasive, sexy political advertisements that are nowhere in alignment with they've, what they've actually done. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the issues we care about most. I imagine, Miles, you want to be able to own a home yeah, at some time? Yeah, that's like my main goal. I want to like own awesome. a home. Awesome. And good, uh, honestly, Miles, everybody in this audience should be able to own a home as easily as your parents were. But right now, especially here in Phoenix, it's so out of grasp. When Trump was president, the average mortgage rate in Phoenix, Arizona, mortgage payment was $700 a month. Now it's $2,000 a month here in the city of Phoenix. Said differently, it required $75,000 a year to buy a home in Phoenix when Trump was president. Now it's $135,000 a year to buy a home. You might say, well, Charlie, how is that Biden and Kamala Harris's fault? They decided to spend six to seven trillion dollars of unnecessary government spending right out of the gate that increased asset prices. Additionally, they allowed 10 million people into the country that we didn't account for. That also increases the d demand for housing, especially here in the state. Mm -hmm. So we really care about the ability for you to be able to own the home. And if Kamala Harris is going to do it, she would have done it these last four years. Secondly, we care about ending the wars. I bet you're pretty interested in that. I, war is not, um, no, maybe? Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's end the wars. Yeah. So Kamala Harris has demonstrated and surrounded herself with people that are 
aggressively in favor of the Russian-Ukrainian war and the same people that designed the failed wars of Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and Libya. For example, Liz Cheney, Dick Cheney, Leon Panetta, John Bolton. Donald Trump is the only president of an unbroken chain of 32 years to start no new wars and actually bring peace to the Middle East. We did not have any new wars under Donald Trump. And finally, I mentioned this briefly, the border. I believe that everyone in this audience should be given preference above somebody who illegally comes into our country that was not welcome or invited. When Trump was president, we had the most secure border in history. Under Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, we've had 10 million people and they get taxpayer funded benefits. They get luxury hotel rooms. They get flights into the interior of the country. And so on those three issues, home ownership, um, the border and war, Donald Trump doesn't just say he did. And I would just ask you, you don't have to answer right now, because I know it's hard to get in front of an audience of people like this. Mm. Can you show me that anything Kamala has done that shows she's better at Trump than what Trump did on those three things? No. That's okay. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I want to encourage you to do your research yeah. because it is very impo it's very tempting to fall for propaganda that you just see on TV. I bet a lot of people here in the audience can give you something to think about and something to consider um, because Kamala Harris, she, is not, she does not care for you. She cares about her own political career. Trump is different. Last thing I'll say is this. The guy's been shot multiple times, facing 700 years in prison. They took all of his money from him, his business empire, and he keeps on fighting. There's something about him where he cares deeply about the well-being of your life and your livelihood to put our country first. So, Thank Rob, do you want to add something I to just, that? I just want to say something that's really important. What's happened under this administration, the Biden-Harris administration, and I, this affects all of you. They've secretly, not so secretly, put in the selective service back in, and I do not want any of you fighting on foreign soil, any of you fighting on any wars. Any of you. I don't want it. And as far as democracy, they say they're saving democracy. Well, let me just, just go over this. Because Bernie Sanders technically had won the in 2016 the Democratic nomination for president. But they didn't give it to him. They used these super, major, they used these super delegates to uh, dump him and put in who they wanted undemocratically in the primary in 2016. In 2020, again, Biden lost the first two primaries and they just made everybody else drop out. And so you had no choice if you were a Democratic voter in 2020, you had to vote for Biden. The same thing again this year. 14 million people voted for Biden in the Democratic primary, and none of those votes count because they just decided to take him out because they thought they could lose, and they just anointed Kamala Harris with zero votes. That is not democracy. That is tyranny, and it gives you a little taste of what they intend to do if they remain in power. So I, I, I wish you the best. Think about this. And I'm going to give you a hat just in case you want to wear it. <laughs> and, and, Miles, let me just ask. What we talked about, those three things, did you hear that previously before in a fair setting? No. no I did not hear it in a fair setting as before. But cool. it's good to be on one-on-one -on -one and just, like, have a conversation about that. Cool. Well, Miles, I want to uh, thank you for coming up. Please. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Miles, appreciate talking. Appreciate talking. Th think about what we said. And... Um, Okay, yes. Let's turn Arizona blue, everybody. You see, man, that was what? not the right. I was trying to. I was. I let you off so mercifully. That what? Makes sense. Hey, you know what though? We're gonna do what's best for you. I mean that. We're always gonna look out for every. I was Arizona. trying to find common ground, man. That, that was. What? I don't, that's yeah, okay. it's just all right. That's so, okay. No, but I, it's totally okay because the difference is between. I mean, dude, you said turn Arizona blue. You can't answer. You couldn't say three words in a row. Okay, so it's like, you, I asked you one thing. It's ridiculous. All right, all right. We'll, we'll bad be. faith actor, man. Hey, I, I try my best to find common ground. You say something like that. It's ridiculous. Next question. Whoa. That's serious. I was not expecting this. Neither did I see this um, coming. But then I don't know how Miles should be feeling right now that um, Trump has been declared you know, as a winner. Charlie Kirk was talking about um, freedom of speech. And I think this is what um, Miles just um, exercised, even though Kamala Harris and Tim Wall see them as privileged. But then freedom of speech is not supposed to be seen as a 
privilege but in there for freedom of speech is a right which is what Marx just exercised even though I don't know how he should be feeling right now that President Donald J. Trump has been declared as the winner of the presidency because if you look at it after all the conversation they had they asked him what are the accomplishments of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden in the last um, three and a half years and then therefore they were not he was not able to mention anything genocide as their accomplishment but then therefore at the end he was there talking about making um arizona um blue again but nevertheless that's the freedom of speech he just exercised but then we just thank god for bringing president donald j trump back so that he can save the world and then save america and then make the world enjoy peace it enjoy three and a half years ago. I know that a lot will have told an opinion concerning this and I wanted to drop it at the comment section. I may God bless you as you do so. So this is the end of my video. If you like my reaction, you should like, share and subscribe. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So you remain blessed and I see you in my next video. Goodbye. <laughs>